my colleague Josh and I um, want to take you on a journey towards open research that we're currently under undertaking at Lancaster University. We like to compare our journey to moving along stepping stones, careful but with a clear plan. We, we will introduce four important stepping stones. Data conversations, our open research cafe, the key learnings from our recent open research survey, and the next stepping stones that we plan to cross. So Data Conversations was born out of a, a desire to diversify our research data management service portfolio. Um, our approach was conventional. We offered training sessions and we provided systems and services to enable RDM best practice across the institution. Now, initially, our approach was policy driven. It began with the enactment of Lancaster University's research data policy. Approved by Senate in 2015, it outlined roles, responsibilities, and requirements. So it's fair to say that it was a largely top-down approach. Now, intuitively, we questioned whether a top-down compliance-driven approach was an effective vehicle to drive us towards instances of RDM best practice. And we indulged our intuition. In 2017, we surveyed around 70 library and information professionals internationally. And we found uh, that the majority considered an engagement-based approach to be more effective, one which communicates the intrinsic value of, of research data management rather than one that mandates uh, compliance. So with this in mind, we set about transitioning to an approach which essentially leveraged our colleagues' passion for, for, for research. So early in 2017, the library launched Lancaster's Data Conversations. Uh, data Conversations are a series of events for researchers from all disciplines and crucially at all career stages to share their experiences of collecting, managing and sharing research data. Now, data conversations are informal and inclusive events. They're organized, they're advertised, and they're hosted by the library. And they begin with a free lunch for all attendees. Uh, pizza plays a pivotal role in our journey towards a culture of open research. Importantly, sharing uh, this informal lunch creates an open and friendly environment, and it sets the tone for the, for the event. Um, the friendly conversation creates an environment that's conducive towards sparking those interdisciplinary uh, connections. Now, crucially, at Data Conversations, the focus is on the, the research, on engaging researchers by giving them a platform to share their data experiences and to learn from their, their colleagues. Now, Data Conversations, it's a small stepping stone but in the context of achieving cultural change, driven by engagement, we believe that it is a meaningful stepping stone. We've welcomed attendees from 23 departments. We've had 237 registrations across seven events. The last three events have sold out and 711 slices of pizza have been eaten. <laughs> Now, anecdotally, the initiative has acted as an incubator for interdisciplinary research, and it continues to act as a springboard for other valuable engagement activities. Now, data conversations, it continues to gain traction and generate interest, both at Lancaster University and beyond the institution. We've had expressions of interest from colleagues at the University of Luxembourg, at the University of Roskilde, Bangor University, and the University of Reading, to name but a few. And what seems to interest our peers at other institutions about data conversations is that it offers a cost-effective, scalable, and reproducible solution for engaging researchers. What we begin to notice uh, at Data Conversations was that many of the issues discussed uh, touched on broader issues, extending beyond the realms of RDM, um, speaking to issues related to, to open research. And so we set about transitioning um, the, the Data Conversations model toward open research. 
and we took this step in, in partnership with colleagues from a grass, grassroots uh, group in our psychology department known as PROSPER, uh, which stands for Promoting Open Science Practices. We've heard at a number of uh, sessions over the last two days, you know, that there are issues within the sector relating to open research. And I think it's helpful to pause for a moment um, to look at what open research is. And I think the University of Reading statements on open research is very helpful in this respect. Um, and it describes open research as a set of principles and practices whose aim is to make the outputs of research freely accessible and usable, thereby to maximise the possibility of public benefit. It's worth commenting before I go on uh, that at Lancaster we employ the discipline agnostic open research rather than open science, but for the purposes of this paper please regard the two as synonymous. Now this is a broad church. The European Commission speak of the eight pillars of open science encompassing the future of scholarly communications, the European Open Science Cloud, fair data, uh, they are data that are findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable, of skills, research integrity, rewards, alt metrics and citizen science. And there are a number of drivers for open research. We'll touch on a few here. There's this Plan S, backed by the European Commission and now 14 national funding agencies, which requires researchers who benefit from state funding to publish in compliance open repositories or journals by 2020. There's REF's environment statements, which speaks of institutional uh, policies for enabling open research. And there are funders, including our cordial hosts today, the Wellcome Trust, who increasingly expect and require the outputs uh, and underlying data generated pursuant to their funding to be made freely open and available, or for access restrictions thereof to be reasonably justified. Now, there's no denying it. Open research is massive, both in scope and in scale. And the challenges are structural and they are cultural. And when working to change culture, it's tempting and to some extent understandable to focus on the tangible aspects of culture, those features that sit above the surface. However, organisational culture is far larger, far more sophisticated than those visible features. And so operating solely at this visible level will likely deliver ineffective um, and unsustainable results. And so we must look beneath the surface uh, in order to understand and change culture, focus on the deeply ingrained aspects of our culture. And now the, the fundamental thing about what lurks beneath the surface is that they're uniquely human features, they're people-centric phenomenon. And so in working to unfreeze and to change cultural practices, we are committed uh, towards involving our researcher community. Um, you know, we cannot dictate the direction of travel here. It's a shared journey. And that's why initiatives such as Data Conversations and the Open Research are, are so important, because they act as a vehicle for that shared journey. And so the Open Research Cafe, co-developed with researchers, builds upon the success of data conversations, community, conversation, sharing food with colleagues and research are still absolutely at the core. Working with our research partners, we modified the European Commission's eight pillars of open science to provide structure to the, the discussions at our inaugural event. Thus, our eight pillars became uh, the Lancaster University Open Research Manifesto, metrics, open peer review, um, systems and services, rewards and incentives, open access, skills and training, and open data. We also used our modified eight pillars of open research to allow our researchers to indicate where their own priorities lay. You can see the results on the right hand side there. And uh, you know, I must say, as, as a research data manager, it's rather gratifying to see that open data, I think, is the, is the, clear, is the clear winner there. 
So following on from our inaugural Open Research Cafe, we resolved to, to cast the net wider, to undertake to investigate perspectives on open research across the institution. And so we sought ethical approval um, for an anonymous online survey to be circulated across the university and to conduct a short series of semi-structured interviews with researchers. So who took part in uh, the survey? So it was conducted uh, last month, so in February uh, 2019, and uh, 160 research staff and PhD students participated. So you can see um, the distribution of the 160 responses here per faculty. So we have four faculties at Lancaster in blue, and in orange you can see the percentage of researchers who participated in the particular faculty. So we asked, so this is coming back to the eight pillars that uh, Josh just showed you. Um, we asked participants to rank the eight open research themes according to how important they are to them. So on this slide, you can see in green um, the themes um, they ranked as their number one priority. In red, you can see the bottom ranked theme seen as the least important. So what is clear when you look at the number one choices in green um, that open access to publications is regarded by, f by far as the most important theme. Nearly half of participants made this their number one choice, followed by some distance um, by the institutional open research statement and open data. So if you then look at the red bars, the bottom ranked themes, you can see that metrics to measure openness are not very popular, followed by open peer review. I believe this graph will, quite, uh, will become quite important in our future conversations um, with senior management, and here's why. So we asked our participants, to what extent do you agree with a statement, open research should be an institutional priority of Lancaster University? So as you can see, 58% strongly agree, and another 27% somewhat agree. So that's together, 86% of participants agree that open research should be an institutional priority, and less than 4% disagree. So this is more than we expected or, or hoped for, and a clear statement that our research community acknowledges the importance of open research. We also um, ask participants to summarize their views uh, on open research in free text, and I would like to highlight a few of those um, views that are typical of certain attitudes. So firstly, there was a lot of enthusiasm expressed, and here are three examples. Um, so the first one on, on the left um, summarizes nicely what open research enthusiasts think. If it's not open, is it really research? In a similar fashion, the, the quote in the middle states that open research is just the natural way of doing things. <clears throat> However, there's also unhappiness and frustration among many researchers about the current publishing system, which in this quote is seen as closed, outdated, unethical, and hindering scientific progress. The next quotes show that um, many researchers have a more nuanced view on open research. For example, um, the one on the left believe it is a good idea, but should not be pursued at the expense of est established publication and peer review practices or the middle researcher approves in principle, but has many reservations about the manner and speed of Im implementation. And then the third quote touches on the fact that open research is not widely discussed within the university. Students are not equipped to engage. Some researchers point to differences between academic disciplines and believe that the most so that most of the open research agenda relates to sciences and does not include humanities in its thinking. The early career researcher on the right points to missing rewards and incentives. Being open will not help them advance their career. And finally, um, some researchers are frustrated with all the inputs, metrics, and assessments like the REF that divert them from their research. 
Others point to the issue of leadership and believe that senior management in our university has the power to change the incentive system and reward researchers for open practices. So our open research investigations demonstrated, we believe, a clear desire to further a culture of open research, but it also revealed a number of legitimate concerns and challenges. So we see the way forward as cultivating a community of open researchers. We aim to create a, a forum for open research with members from different disciplines and at different career stages who can engage in a meaningful dialogue and continue to identify initiatives that embed openness in practice. I should pause for a minute really and acknowledge that we have not invented this concept. Uh, this is a, an example of a dimension of innovation referred to as horizon scanning or as Masood might say, of stealing good ideas. And so all credit here to the University of Manchester and likewise for the, the spark that lit the data conversations fire to our colleagues at Cambridge University. Openness, collegiality, knowledge sharing and giving due credit are fundamental parts of what we do and they you know, represent an important part of our, our journey. We also recognise that ultimately we do need buy-in from senior leadership not least because we would like a budget. A seed fund to continue to cultivate the growing culture, to develop an open research online presence, to organize and deliver an open research symposium, perhaps to support early career researchers who wish to travel to events where openness plays a central role. Now we believe in what we are doing Open research is a concept, it's an ideal which resonates with our own values. We're working to change culture and that is notoriously challenging and it takes time. But we'll continue to foster a culture of open research with humility and with perseverance. And we recognise that not every initiative that we undertake will succeed and failure is okay. And reframe to fail is simply the first attempt in learning. Our journey, we believe it demonstrates the evolving role that academic libraries can play in developing new services um, that contribute and support changing practices in research. Now, I'm reminded, and I have been over the last two days, of Sconnell's 2017 report, Mapping the Future of Academic Libraries. And in that context, we operate amidst a nexus of different and evolving trends. We're moving from emphasizing collections to services, or at least to collections as one service amongst others. The traditional outside-in role of libraries, of selecting, acquiring, and managing externally produced content for an institutional community remains. But this traditional role is complemented by a growing inside-out role of libraries, of managing internally produced content for sharing beyond the institutional community. And in my mind, the synergies between open research and the growing inside-out role are becoming clearer of promoting and enabling openness, curating and managing institutional repositories and sharing our research outputs beyond the institution with the world without restriction. We're consciously questioning old mantras and we are building new paradigms. We're providing services and activities across the institution, often at scale. We are partnering, co-working with researchers, professional service partners, other institutions present within the room today and other external organisations. And we are leading, innovating in new areas. We're persuading key stakeholders of the way forwards. We're contributing towards overall institutional strategy and we are co-creating and communicating a compelling vision for open research. Now we believe that our approach is, is reproducible, it's low cost, it's modular, and it's community driven. 
There are two essential pieces of advice I would give any colleagues in the room who are interested in pursuing it, and that is be ever mindful of your own institutional culture. And secondly, identify both critical friends and allies who can co-author and advocate for your, your vision for open research. Now, the final word today goes to one of our researchers who said that open research is of great importance not least because we are creating increasingly more digital data sets, but also for preservation and sustainability of knowledge. From my point of view, Lancaster needs to make open research one of its priorities. So all that remains is to, to thank you all for joining us on our journey towards open research, and we keenly await your questions. <laughs>